To get a first idea of what topic modeling is about, let's start with a small example. This is taken from an article I published together with Karina Jacobi and others about four years ago, um, published in Digital Journalism titled Quantitative Analysis of Large Amounts of Journalistic Text Using Topic Modeling. In this paper, we wanted to show to the digital journalism community and other scholars how you can use topic modeling um, to answer questions about a large corpus. In this case, what we did is we took the nuclear energy discourse, so all articles about nuclear energy, nuclear power, nuclear weapons, in the New York Times from the end of the Second World War in, until uh, the present day. Partly, this reproduces the famous 1989 study by Gamsa and Modigliani, where they also investigated the framing of nuclear power um, in the newspapers. Interestingly, they have a completely different uh, method. They did a qualitative analysis of cartoons. So it's very interesting, interesting to see whether the, 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 the topics or the frames that we find with topic modeling can be compared with the general developments that Gums and Modigliani report in their article. As a first example, this figure shows a, a newspaper article from 1986 in the New York Times coded with the topics that LDA automatically found in the whole corpus. Every word is colored by the by the topic it found. The words that are grayed out were filtered out in the pre-processing steps, either because they were too infrequent or because they were stop words. What we see here is the article that 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 compare um, the, the, the that put the, the the Chernobyl disaster in the context of the uh, Cold War. So they they talk about how the Chernobyl disaster happened, how the Soviet Union suppressed all the news of it, how this delay alarmed and misled people. And they end with saying that Gorbachev cannot win the confidence in his pledges to reduce nuclear weapons if he forfeits his trust over the peaceful use of nuclear energy. So what you see here is an, a newspaper article that quite obviously combines multiple topics, right? It talks about the, the, um, the accident, the event, but it places it in the bigger context of the Cold War and of the, um, the desire by Mikhail Gorbachev to, to bring the two super countries closer together. And you see that reflected in the, the topic model that was estimated. So um, the topics here were automatically found by the computer from the whole corpus. The labels, of course, were added by the research that they were added by us. But what you see here is that there's clearly a, a cluster of words like Chernobyl, disaster, radiation, catastrophe, delay, uh, that are reflect the uh, that refer to the nuclear disaster. There's words like Soviet Union, country, Gorbachev, weapons, pledges, confidence that are more clearly about um, the Cold War. And there's words like secrecy, peaceful use, energy, that we call the research topic. Now, the first question is probably, how do you actually assign those topics, right? Um, and this is actually one of the tools you have. You can look at the article, see which words are, um, are assigned to which topics, and that gives you an idea of how the words are used. What you would see most often, however, is a figure like this where uh, you get a list of the various topics, in this case topic 1 to 10, this was only 10 topics. You get the top words in the topic, so for example for the, um, say take the first topic, it's about atomic energy, science, bomb, commission, research, um, but also has words like Washington and United and Weapon in there. And from this list we concluded that this might be called research. Um, this is not an extremely clear case. Um, for example, topic number seven about Iran, North Korea, pro weapons programs, officials, countries in China are more clearly about proliferation. However, to really uh, figure out what a topic refers to or not, what you very often have to do is to not just look at this list, which is normally the only thing that is presented in research articles, but also go back to the actual articles and see which topics are labeled, and which words are labeled with which topics, so you can really understand how a topic is used. Now, we divided these topics into uh, three broad categories. One is um, topics with temporal patterns, so topics that display clear spikes, and like um, the accidents danger topic, which, which clearly spikes whenever there's an accident or danger, right? So it can be about uh, the Three Mile Island disaster, it can be about Fukushima, it can be about um, the Chernobyl. Then there are some topics that just happen all the time, like U.S. politics. Um, U.S. politics is always involved. The nuclear power topic um, is always involved, and also the weapon topics, right? So these are not very strongly connected with a certain spike or a certain um, uh, time periods. Then finally, and also I think quite interesting, interestingly, there were a number of topics that were just junk, right? They were totally irrelevant, had nothing to do with our research question. 
So how did they get in? Uh, well, realized that we just um, we just took all the articles from the New York Times that contained the word nuclear. And nuclear can also refer to nuclear family, which, which brings a lot of books about uh, men and women in there. And also in the book reviews and film sections and summaries, which you very often have, is that there's one part of it is might be about nuclear technology, but that's just one summary within a lot of summaries or one review within a lot of reviews in a single article. And that means that a lot of text that has nothing to do with nuclear proliferation, nuclear energy is brought into the corpus. And the idea of, of topic modeling is that every word needs to be assigned to a topic. So if there's lots of junk words, there needs to be a junk topic. This might seem problematic, and often if you, you do a topic model, you would really like all your topics to make sense. Um, but it's actually, in a way, a feature more than a bug, because this also shows you what part of your corpus might actually not be relevant to your analysis. So once we've estimated our topic model and we've validated it at least um, with the face validity, we'll talk more about that later, and we've assigned labels to each of the topics, we can start doing the substantive analysis. Uh, let's have a look at two small examples. One is uh, we looked at um, the topics that uh, changed over time. And this is a, a graph over time from the 40s to the 2010s, showing a, a small number of topics um, that were interesting over time. And what you see, the topic that we labeled the research topic starts really high. And this might also be called the sort of promise of nuclear energy topic, which is close to the promise of energy frame that um, Gans and Modigliani detected. It starts very high in the beginning. It's actually most of the, the content is about this topic. It goes down pretty quickly as the disadvantages of nuclear power are also uh, discovered. And it stays it's really low in the end um, if it's totally dominated by nuclear proliferation. Then we have the accidents danger topic, which spikes for Three Mile Island, it spikes for Chernobyl, um, and later on it spikes for Fukushima as well. So you see those little spikes for each of those disasters. And then finally we have something called the nuclear proliferation topic, which was actually not very important uh, for the duration of the Cold War. But we see after the Cold War that it really spikes and now becomes the dominant topic. A second interesting analysis is actually to compare um, uh, topic models with a lower number of topics with a higher number of topics. So this is a um, subset of topics from a detailed 25 topic model and the um, 10 topic model. And in fact, the solid line here is the nuclear accidents topic that we saw earlier. And you see now that if you um, go from uh, 10 topics to 25 topics, the nuclear accidents are actually taken by a, a number of different topics. So one is about Shoreham, one is about uh, Three Mile Island. It's interesting that those two actually um, get specific topics of their own, but it's probably because those were in the region of New York, where the New York Times is based. So they have quite different coverage than a, a disaster happening in a far away country. And we see here that um, uh, Chernobyl and later on also um, Fukushima actually get peaks in the same topic. So what you see here is that it actually can make quite a large difference how many topics you decide to fit, right? If you if you have only a very small number of topics, you get rather broad teams like accidents or dangers. If you go to a smaller number of topics, you will get um, smaller subtopics or even specific events like the, the Three Mile Island um, um, accident or the Chernobyl and Fukushima events. So how do you actually determine how many topics you use? Well, one thing is what we are already doing here, right? So manually inspect it, look at it, see if it makes sense. And that is in fact one of the most important tools you have for topic models, the, 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 most, the, the most relevant criterion is that they make sense. Now the other criterion is, is to use the perplexity score or some other goodness of fit measure, right? Um, so uh, you can mathematically, you can, you can measure how well your topic model actually predicts the data in your corpus. So how good is the fit of the topic model to the corpus? And you can express this as a perplexity score where a lower perplexity means that it's a better fit. Now, since you're, um, you're computing the perplexity uh, on the topic model, uh, generally the more topics you have, the, the higher the fit, the better the fit is. And um, since it's uh, still a relatively low number of variables, uh, normally you don't really get any overfitting effect and you just get a monotonically decreasing line. Um, and what you're looking for is not the, the minimum on this line because the minimum will be um, somewhere over here with an enormous amount of topics. What you are looking for is the, the place where it bends, right? Sometimes called the, the elbow points in the graph. So you want to see the place where adding more topics gives you diminishing returns. Um, 
that is sometimes difficult to interpret it, but if you look at the curve here, um, what you see is that it's probably located somewhere around this region, right? So somewhere around the 25 topic regions and definitely between 10 and 50 topics. So this doesn't really give you the definitive answer, but it will, def it will give you an idea of where to look for the best number of topics. And usually if you go more for, for human sense making, um, you tend to have a lower number of topics. If you go for the um, statistical uh, goodness or fit for the perplexity measure, you will end up with a higher number of topics. But the most important thing is that you identify the interesting region. And then within this region, you can uh, manually uh, inspect a number of different topic models and see which one makes most sense or which, which one is most valid. A second thing you see here in the graph is the effect of alpha. Um, alpha is a hyperparameter that you can set when you are fitting a topic model. We will talk more about this later, but in a sense it affects how um, cohesive the individual topics are. And, um, and the default that is used, at least in the R implementation, is to have 50 divided by K topics. So if you have 10 topics, you get an alpha of 5. In our experience, that's generally too high, both for the goodness of fit and for the, the interpretation of the topic model. And we would suggest going more along the region of 5 over K or 1 over K. So with 10 topics, you would end up with 0 0.5 alpha. Um, and what you see here in the perplexity plot is that actually the lower alpha gives you quite a better, um, uh, quite a much better goodness of fit. So this also supports the idea that probably a lower alpha is better than a very high alpha and it certainly means that it makes sense to deviate from the defaults and again we would suggest going for something like um, 5 over k or something around the, 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 the one region for a normal, normal number of topics.